Hello everybody. Our middle school math video today is about fraction fundamentals. The lesson, converting improper fractions to mixed numbers. This is an improper fraction. It's called improper because the numerator is larger than the denominator. When we convert it to a mixed number, don't forget that a mixed number has a whole number followed by a fraction. So give yourself some space and then put in your fraction bar. And then also don't forget that it doesn't matter what form your fractions are in, the denominator will always be the same. Start each question this way. Give yourself some space for that whole number and then write in your fraction with the same denominator. Next, we need to figure out what's this whole number going to be. And here's how you do that. You come over here to your improper fraction and you look at your denominator. In this case, it's a three. And then you ask yourself, at most, how many times can this number 3 go into 20? The answer is 6. 6 is going to be your whole number. And then the last thing we need to figure out is what's the numerator going to be? To figure out your numerator, come over here to your mixed number and take your denominator, 3, and multiply it by your whole number. 3 times 6 is 18. And then ask yourself, what do I add to 18 to make 20? That would be 2. So 20 over 3 is equal to 6 and 2 thirds. If that's a little bit tricky at first, you can use long division to help you. Here's how that works. We have 20 over 3. That is the same as 20 divided by 3. So fractions and division are the same. Have you ever noticed that a division symbol looks like a fraction? And that's because the two are related. So if we have 20 divided by three and we want to use long division, we could write it like this, three into 20. And then we go through our long division steps. Three goes into 20 six times, six times three is 18. And we have a remainder of two. When we start long division, we always write remainders like this remainder 2. But did you know there's a different way you can write your remainder? You can write your remainder as a fraction. Your remainder here at the bottom is your numerator and your divisor is your denominator. So if you are struggling a little bit with your conversions this way, you can use long division to help. Let's take a look at another example. We have 55 over 6. I want to write this as a mixed number, so leave some space for that whole number and then put in a fraction bar, same denominator. Next, let's figure out that whole number. At most, how many times can six go into 55 without going over? And that would be nine times. Now we need to figure out that numerator. So I'm gonna multiply the six times the nine. That would be 54. What do I need to add to make 55? That would be one. Again, if you want to use that long division strategy to help you out, it would look like this. We would recognize that 55 over 6 is the same as 55 divided by 6. And then we would just set up some long division. 6 into 55. 6 goes into 55 9 times. 9 times 6 is 54 with a remainder of 1. We wouldn't write a remainder of 1, we would write it as a fraction. The remainder is our numerator and the divisor is our denominator. Long term, we don't want to use long division too much. We want to be able just to go from an improper fraction to a mixed number like this. So let's practice with a few more examples here. First one, we have 35 over 4. So we're going to put our equal sign, leave some space and then put a denominator of 4 on our fraction. Next, how many times does 4 go into 35 without going over? That would be 8. Multiply these together. 4 times 8 is 32. We need 35, so we need to add 3. In our next example, we have a denominator of 7, so we leave a space, fraction bar, denominator of 7. 7 goes into 26 three times, seven times three is 21, plus five is 26. A couple more examples here. Let's leave a space for our whole number and put in a denominator of six. Okay, how many times does six go into 29 without going over? That would be four times. 
6 times 4 is 24, plus 5 makes 29. Last one here. Give yourself some space for that whole number. Put in a denominator of 8, and then do your division. How many times does 8 go into 61? Well, I know 8 times 8 is 64. That's too much. 8 times 7. There we go. 8 times 7 is 56. I need to add 5 more to make 61. All right, guys. I hope that helps. Keep on trying. And remember, practice makes progress. If you're interested in some worksheets to practice this, there is a download link in the description.